Hey y'all, it's Laura and another typewriter day. So this video is about a Remington Portable. It's a 1931 and it's one of those um, special colors. So gorgeous. Can't wait to show it to you. Uh, one of the things is you'll watch during the video, I struggle to find a, the what to do with a line selector. I can't figure out how to use it. Actually was using it properly. I just didn't know it until the very end. So you'll want to watch the whole thing on it. It's a little discombobulated, um, mainly because this is such a different typewriter. It operates so different than most typewriters. And so I was kind of bouncing around. But if you have one, I know you're probably going to want to look at all the little things that I have in this video. So especially on the line selector, if you want to learn how to use that, it's at the very end. So I know in the video, I'm like, I don't know how to do this. I ended up figuring it out. All right, so let's take a look. Let's jump in. Hey, everybody, it's Laura with Shot and Tittle Vintage Typewriters. Have I got a beauty for you today? Oh my goodness, look at this. This is the original colors. It's a 1931 Royal portable look at that oh my goodness it's stunning wow i love it um so i'm i'm gonna do a tutorial video on this but also kind of give you my feedback in terms of what i think of it as a as a writer and what kind of situations that i would use it in um i just did a little bit of typing on it and I will be honest, this typed so much better than I was expecting. And my little fingers really liked it because these keys, at least on this one, now I'll keep in mind with vintage typewriters, it really depends on, because they're vintage, you know, this one's almost a hundred years old. It's 90 some years old. Um, but you know, it's vintage. So it depends on how it's been taken care of, where it's been stored, that all impacts how it's going to perform. And then also if you purchase a typewriter that's been serviced or restored or refurbished or nothing, that all makes a difference. So I can't guarantee that because my typewriter works this way, that's what another one is, but they still have their own characteristics. So all I can do is review this Royal Portable that I have here and tell you what I think. Now I do love, normally Remingtons aren't my favorite, but when they come out with like their color schemes or their designs, they're just so fantastic. Like this teal blue green thing is just, I'm in love with it. And it only has, it's over 90 years old and it only has a little nick right here. Are you kidding me? Wow. And the green keys here, oh, I just love it. And it the bounce back on this is fantastic. So like um, some of the reasons why smaller hands have trouble with typewriters is there's a lot of effort that actually goes into pressing down sometimes. And, but this one, when you press it, you don't have to press it down far and then it kind of really bounces back on its own and you can feel it and it makes it light. It's light for your hand and, oh, okay. So, but the other thing is as a writer, I wouldn't necessarily write a book on this unless I really want to take my time because since it's portable and it comes with um, a cover, let me see if I can find it. So this is attached to the bottom board of the case. Now you can, there's screws right here, so you can unscrew it and take it off, which I actually recommend um, unless you're someone that moves around a lot or you need to keep it in the case, then just keep it attached. But then the cover, you know, sits on top. And so there's not a lot of room. And because of that, the return handle is very short. And, um, and it's just a pain to use, honestly. So as a writer, that would really impact my flow. And I don't think I would write a book on it. So that is the only reason why I wouldn't. I mean, but like I said, this performed better than I expected. So 
Like if I'm not in a hurry, I actually might write a book on this because it felt so amazing. Now, another thing about Remington typewriters is they don't use the traditional universal ribbon spools. Their spools are smaller and um, they're very, so if you lose them, it's really hard to find a replacement spool. So if you have a Remington, make sure your spool is in there and guard that spool. I mean, like that is golden. Don't, don't lose those. But you're like, well, how do I get a new ribbon? Well, you have a couple options. You can order a universal ribbon and take off the ribbon off that spool and put it on yours. Or we have an option in our website where it's called custom spools or custom ribbon. And you send us your spools. We put fresh ribbon on it and we send it back to you. Um, okay. So let's talk about how this works because it's different. And, you know, it's been a while since we've had one and it took us a minute to remember how it worked because it's, it is different. So for one, because it comes with that narrow case, you're going to open it up and you're going to be like, um, I can't get this to work. It's not typing. Well, the thing you have to do is you have to, on the right side, you'll notice there's not a handle on the left, only on the right. You have to pull this out. So you just hold this and you're going to have to pull pretty hard. Pull that out. And now you can use your typewriter. The other thing is, is when you load your paper, it's a pretty tight fit. So you put it in there and you know, your paper bale um, arm comes way out and then you're gonna have to like sh shove it underneath there and, and then straighten it out. But it kind of bends back and then goes up. And so you'll notice that as you're typing, you'll kind of hear your paper crinkle on that. Now to get the handle, and if you're gonna put the cover back on, you have to put the handle back in. And to do that, there is a tiny lever right here and I'm gonna hold it up to the camera so that you can see it. Sorry, it's an overcast day today, so I don't have as much light as I normally do. But I don't know, can you see that? It's that right there. Okay, so there's your carriage release is in the back. This is your carriage release. This is your return handle. And this is the, um, I don't know what they call it, but this release is the roller handle. So um, let me show you. You got to push that in and then push the handle in and then release it. Okay. Um, I believe, I'm not sure. There is a little knob right here, and I think it has to do with line spacing, but I can't get it to work. Oh, let me, let me open this up. Okay. Yeah, I, I haven't been able to figure out how that works, but I'm pretty sure it has to do with line spacing. Um, so sorry about that, folks. I can't, I can't figure out how it works on this. The other thing is, I don't know, I'm totally going in a different direction. Let's back up. Okay. This one is so different. That's why I'm kind of discombobulated. It doesn't fit within my normal flow of start here and go here. It's so different, but let's go back to the back. So let me take the paper out. So you've got your paper plate back here and um, a couple of things that I'm not quite sure what they are, but all right. I'm trying to be careful with this typewriter. All right, so this is your margins and you press and drag. You press the little end and this one's a little sticky. All right, let me go back and do this one. This one's moving much easier. It's much happier. So that's how you move your margins. And it's the same with this one. This one's just not happy. So my husband will have to take a look at that. You also have a paper holder that you can fold out here. All right. And then let me put this down. From what I can tell, and I could be wrong, and if I'm wrong, just... Let me know in the comments, um, but I just ask that you guys be nice about it. Um, 
we're all doing the best we can. So there's the tab, but I'm pretty sure the tabs are preset on this because I have not found a set or a clear on it. Okay, so over here, this is your carriage release. Okay, you can use this side too, doesn't matter. Um, carriage release, I showed you the lever to push the handle back in. I know this has to do with line selector, but I'm not able to get mine to work for some reason and I could be moving it wrong. This over here, there's another knob and it's right here and it's also on this side. That is gonna be your ribbon reversal. So when you get to the end of your spool, you can turn it and it goes the other way, okay? There was a trick to that and I don't remember what it was. Um, but that is how you, um, you kind of just press it back and forth. All right, down here we have the margin release. I know this is, we're used to like, hey, that's usually the ribbon reversal. It's not, it's the margin release. Here's your shift, your shift lock. And to release it, you have to use the same side. Over here is your tab and then you have a backspace. This is your color selector. Right now it's on red, there's black, okay? Let's load a piece of paper and um, see what it does here. And yeah, if there's something in there to that I've missed on it, because we don't get these very often, so I could be missing something on it, but I'm just, for those of you that have one and you wanna at least start to use it, you know, here we go. So I have it on red, let me switch it to black. So to hit the return handle, you gotta pull you pull it down and then you have to manually push it over. It's kind of weird. You'll you'll see when you get it. Don't be afraid of it. So we're here and I take the handle and I'm gonna push down and over. And right now it's like on triple space because I think I have it on that and I don't know how to change it. I love how this feels. Oh my goodness, it's so fun. But at the same time, look there, I moved one space, I could feel the one, and then I just pushed over. So it's easier for me, maybe it's supposed to be that way, but let's go back. If I wanna do double, click, click, push. Let's go back, maybe I wanna do triple, click, click, click. I guess it only does double. But we can go back, let me do single, click, over. So I hope that makes, I hope that makes sense. Um, let me try the caps. I really like this typewriter, it's so fun. Okay, so that's the basics of it. Um, margin release, let's go check the margin release. You can hear the bell. Um, let me move that margin over a little bit more. Sorry, I'm trying to do it blindly. There we go. So it ends, it's stopped. Margin release. Oh. This is, oh, this is it, that's right. Margin release, so it released it, and so now I could keep typing if I wanted. So that is the Remington Portable. I'm not, this is a 1931. They have models one, two, three, and four. I think this is a four, but I'm not totally sure. It is one of the later models. But the colors, these are really hard to find. Um, so if you find one that's the original colors, I know sometimes people paint them. But this two-tone is original. The, the, um, you can see the logos look really good on it. Um, really fantastic. So let me know if you've got one of these and if you like it. 
And if you know how to, um, if this uh, sets the line selector or not. Oh, wait, I think I just did it. I did. <laughs> All right, so you pull it out and turn. There we go, that's two. I pulled it out, turn, one. Sometimes it's more simple. We try to make it harder than it really is. So I'll hold, let me hold this up. Where is it? Right here. Sorry, I can't see what I'm doing. You pull it out and turn. Out and turn. You either turn it up or down. So we figured that out. Yay! All right. Thanks for putting up with me, y'all. Hey, I always forget. Like, subscribe, tell your friends about us. Sure appreciate it. Have a good day.